So let's pray. Um, I, I hope you all have been, we're starting now, those of you on Skype and in the room. Have you all been having a good time with the Holy Spirit in Mike? I just personally have been uh, overwhelmed, I continue to be overwhelmed. And I know that that's the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit because he wants to bring forth his son. So Lord, we just thank you for uh, overwhelming us and overshadowing us because it's not about us being emotionally affected or intellectually affected, but for the Christ that is in us to be formed and the deep work of the Spirit to bring forth the Son in the way the Father needs and that this book is as if, God, you just gave a treasure of your heart to us to help us. And we we receive it in that spirit with that desire and just we love you and we want to bring forth Jesus. So every heart that will listen to this that is gathered unto you, Father, and to Micah, let, let the veil be rent and let them see, Lord, into the depths of your heart for your son and the wonders of the working of the Holy Spirit and things that were prophesied so long ago but yet came from things before the foundation of the world in your heart, Lord, from everlasting to everlasting, the eternal. <laughs> oh, Father, we love you. We have no words. Be with us during this time. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, so I'm going to just... I'm going to use the homework as just a recap of the journey I like, the context of the scriptures. I believe that as we go in context, we can continue in what the Spirit is saying through the prophet because it's building. It's always building. And um, for me, it, it, it's just good. It's good. It's searching the scriptures. So, um, but I don't want to take a lot of time because the word the Lord has for us tonight is very precious, and I don't want it to get cut off. <laughs> um, so I want to get there. And I want to do, a, not a spoiler alert, but I do want to say that as we progress through the chapters, all the way through chapter 7, it gets better and better and better. And that some of the things in this book are so powerful <laughs> in regards to bringing forth Christ that it'll blow your mind <laughs> and rock your world. But if your heart isn't in that place, if this is just a class or a teaching, um, it will just be water on a rock. It'll mean nothing. It'll just be scriptures. But if you are with the spirit of God and what he's doing right now, it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> I just want to say that it's blowing mine. <laughs> I just know it will. So stick with the Lord and let the spirit have his way. And it's, God's heart is just so good, just so good in regards to bringing forth his son in us. All right, so in chapter one, we have God speaking to the earth and all that is in it. So that's, that's the beginning. We saw in um, Micah, Micah chapter 1 that the Lord is coming and he's speaking to the earth and what's in it. In other words, he's speaking to us as earthen vessels and he's wanting to talk to vessels that were created to contain his son. How cool is that? I'm, he's like, I'm coming to you as somebody who was created to bring forth my son. That's, that's how I'm approaching you right now, not on any other basis. Um, and then he begins to, to deal with things that have filled the earth that are not the son, and he's treading on those because he's saying, hey, how can you be full of my son if you're full of, of everything else, you know? Um, so he's treading on those high places in order to um, get it full of Jesus, you know? So we, it feels like condemnation or it feels like judgment or something like that. But in reality, it is just um, the mercy of God to say, hey, you're going to miss everything. If you're going to be so full of you and of all these other images that are the land and these spirits, and you know what I'm saying, governments, inhabitants, how are you ever going to bring forth my son? So it's just merciful. It, it sure don't feel merciful. And everybody has to go get past, you know, self-pity bridge and all those little, you know, guys, the trolls that are trying to take you down, make it all about you and all about your sin and all about your bad 
the prodigal got past it, didn't he? Somehow he looked in the father's eyes and said, there's something else going on here, you know, and and if you can get past that and let it do what it's supposed to do, good God, the things that are waiting for you. <laughs> I am dead serious. Oh, my Lord Jesus. He's way better than we deserve. But it's all because he loves his son so much. Praise the Lord. We get in on that. <laughs> Amen. All right. So uh, he's treading down all that big, fat earth that's not full of Jesus and saying, hey, man, you were created to be inhabited with my son. Let's get back to the reality of what you were made for. Let's do this, right? So he does that and uh, begins to say, your sin has risen up into the government of Samaria and Jerusalem, these high places that are formed, that are formed into government, and it's not the enthroned, slaughtered little lamb that we're glorifying in all eternity in the book of Revelation. You know, it's religion, it's selfishness, it's idolatry. If you look in Ezekiel chapters 8 and 9, you can imagine the foul, defiling imagery, the harlotry, the idolatry, the idol worship that's going on in the temple right around, you know, some of the times that are being prophesied. It's just totally defiled. This is in Jerusalem. This is in Samaria. These are the places that are that rising. That's what's filled the people has become a government. They're capital cities. So he's saying that, there it is. There's proof positive. We talked about that last week. What is the proof that you haven't really entered, you know, brought forth the sun? Well, what comes out of you? I mean, you know, I mean, it's as simple as if you have a baby, it's proof that you have a baby. <laughs> you know, your baby is going to look like what you're full, what you were full of, and um, when this baby came out, it didn't look nothing like Jesus. It looked like a big old ball of selfishness. And he said, "That ain't my son. That ain't my." We talked about that last time. Really, we're doing the real quick version here. Micah mourns. He's like, "Oh man." We could have given the father his son. Our purpose was to bring forth Christ. This was, this was everything. All creation groans for the manifestation of the son out of the earth. All creation groans. And we brought forth wind. We've miscarried the purpose of our existence and brought forth flesh. We have brought forth the son. And he's, he's not crying over sin like everyone thinks the prophets are. He's brokenhearted over the father not getting his son. It's a whole different spirit. You know, that's the blessed morning. It's not the morning over ourselves, but over the, we talked about that. Okay, so that's the questions from last week. So now we're going to just recap finally the final bit of chapter um, one. We talked a little bit about it last week, starting with verse 10 in chapter one of Micah. Declare ye it not at Gath. Weep ye not at all in the house of Aphra, roll thyself in the dust, pass ye away, thou inhabitant of sapphire. Having thy shame and naked, the inhabitant of Zainan came not forth in the morning of Beth Ezel. He shall receive of you his standing, the inhabitant of Morath, waited carefully for good, but evil came down from the Lord unto the gate of Jerusalem. O thou inhabitant of Lachish, bind the chariot to the swift beast. She is the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for the transgression of Israel were found in thee. Therefore thou shalt give presents to Morasheth Gath. The house of Ashzib shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. So we looked at that last week. But I want to just quickly recap um, a few things. A picture I got over these verses is similar to last week, but it's like a baby shower. When the baby's born, this, you know, there was angels rejoicing when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and there was shepherds that came and worshipped. Wise men gathered from all corners of the earth to pour over him, you know what I'm saying? There's this rejoicing that the Son of God is born into the earth, right, out of an earthen vessel. Her name is Mary. Well, this is like the opposite. The Son of God wasn't born. Something else came out. And so declare it not a gath. Don't announce that a son is born. Unto us a, son is, a child is born and a son is... Do not do that. Declare it not. The son isn't born. Um, verse 12, waited carefully for good. There's this expectation when you're going to have a child. There's this nine months of expectancy. I expect a baby's coming in nine months, right? You waited carefully for good, but look what came forth, right? It's not there. Um, a verse, uh, what is this? Verse 13, it says, to the transgressions of Israel were found in, in you. 
I can't, you know, I can't describe when the Holy Spirit lands on the words. It's not teaching. He's like, you feel what God's feeling. If what was found in you was not my son, don't give presents to one another rejoicing over this baby. Don't wait carefully for good. Declare it not. So there's this, there's this mourning over the fact that the son wasn't born and he was supposed to be. We talked all about that, and I don't want to belabor that point, but I do want to bring us right to this point, and that is verse 15. Now, this is great. This is, this is the beginning of, of hearing. This is the beginning of going into the heart of God. Yet will I bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Marisha. He shall come unto Adullam, the glory of Israel. Here it is. Amen. After all of that, in my life, let's make it our story. Doesn't, we're not looking at scriptures. We're looking at our history and our future, our story. Though all of that, that should have been the sun in, let's just say, my life, and instead it's these things that are formed that aren't Christ, and they manifest in my attitudes that are selfish and wrong and just wrong. It's not Jesus. It's Kelly. And I'm mourning with Micah, and I'm pouring out my heart that I want the son, right? And here's what the Lord says at the end of that. You know, and he's totally treading down all that and exposing it. But here in 15, he says, yet will I bring an heir unto thee. Who is the heir? Sorry. The firstborn son. Hallelujah. He shall come unto Adullam. And didn't we talk about the caves? And listen, even though old prodigal Kelly search your name if you want i know mine goes there <laughs> and you've been in the pig pen a long time right yet will i bring you an heir i want to bring forth my son in you that's hope that's hope right there you can you can mourn with micah you can declare it not at gas you can let all these things that should have been times of rejoicing that a son is born uh, <laughs> He's manifest, you know, the joy of bringing him forth is not happening. But you can latch your heart onto that last birth. My father, the word of God said yet. That word yet, make it as big as a mountain in your heart. You know, learn the sign language. Write it in the sand. Make branches and put it on the beach of your mind where God can see the word yet. It's said yet in your word, you know? So I'm on this island of me, and I'm going to say, if you fly over, look at the word yet, and birth your son in this ground, because the word of God said yet, will you bring forth your heir. You're going to do it, Lord, and it ain't based on me. It's based on your heart for your son. Oh, my God. Hold on to it. Let's hold on to it together. <laughs> Amen. I... Whew. So anyway, all right, and the next verse says, okay, make thee bald and pull thee for thy delicate children. Enlarge the, thy baldness as an eagle. They're gone into captivity from thee. You're like, man, you should mourn, O land, for thy darling children. You should shave your hair and mourn grievously. Uh, the land is compared to a mother weeping for her children. Um, the, imagery, the imagery here is that a mother whose children are being carried away into captivity because they're not... Listen, the fruit that was brought form, forth instead of, and it talks about this in Micah. I'm not just talking here. It says this in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, but we're not there yet. But the son that these people were supposed to bring forth was supposed to go right up to the father in sacrifice. It says it in Micah. Instead, it's the wrong son, so it goes right over to captivity. He said, your children are going to be delivered unto captivity, and you should mourn for that because they're not the right fruit. And in captivity, and Micah's going to go into this too, and I'm not going to go too deep into it until we get to that chapter, but in captivity they are going to thresh, they are going to travail in birth, and they're going to bring forth a baby in Babylon. Can I hear an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. And you know who told him to do it? God told him. And you know what book he told him to do it in? Micah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, but it's all there, and, and it's, you know, so, so what do we do when those children are going into captivity? That junk in us that needs to be dealt with, the rod of God comes down and says, you are in trouble, 
And why are you in trouble? Because you brought forth the fruit of you instead of the fruit of me. Now, hello. Okay, that should not be a happy day. That should not be a happy day. Where do those children go where they're not going up to the Father in sacrifice because they're us? No matter how good they look, how Christian they look, how right they look, they were not Jesus. So they're off to captivity. But the Lord says, uh, you know, mourn over that, not over that you failed, but over that they weren't my son. But when you get there, you start threshing your little heart out. You start seeking my face. like you, And that's where you get into Jeremiah. That's where you get into Ezekiel. And you start laying those over this. And you see what's happening in there. And you get after it. You don't go into depression. You don't go into self-pity and self, uh, you know, you self-forget. You totally self-forget in the land of your captivity. And you start travailing in birth. Because God said, yet will I bring an heir unto thee. And you ain't going to let him go. You're going to be that woman that just pesters him every day. Lord, you said, yet I will bring an heir unto you. We're going to do this right here in the land of my captivity where I earned a free pass into being dealt with. <laughs> because I brought forth the wrong fruit. How many times in our life a day do we do that? I know myself every day. And there are colossal times where God deals with me. But you know what? I latch on to his heart for his son, and I say, Lord, let's do this. What good is it wallowing in the past? What good is it wallowing in this vile fruit? I want to go into this dealing with a heart ready to birth out Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Man, can you hold on to that? I mean, that it's blowing my mind, and it's getting into my heart. So... So this is what's the end of chapter 1. This is the end of chapter 1. And, um, and so from there, the Lord said, we need a, we're going to pause now. We're going to put the pause button on Micah. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 1. And we're going to, we, there's a certain template that I believe needs to be laid from the New Testament over this Old Testament prophet so that it can really resonate in us right where we're at. And so let's go to Luke chapter 1, and while you're turning there, um, I just want to read Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, because Micah prophesied of what is fixing to happen in Luke chapter 1, or begin to happen in Luke chapter 1. The Lord had him include this event that would manifest in time and space in his prophecy. And let me tell you, that is not a random, disconnected scripture. It's right in context with what Micah's trying to say to us. So Micah chapter 5, verse 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is, to be a ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So he is prophesying of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. In, now, the fact that God gave this little man that insight into where the Son of God was going to be birthed out of a human vessel is no random thing if you think about what chapter 1 was just saying. What other book would it really, really be in? Where else would he really prophesy the exact location? It'd have to be Micah because that's what Micah's about, the Son being birthed out of earth, earthen vessels. That's Micah. Isaiah's got a broad overview, and he talks about it. A virgin shall bring forth. No, Isaiah's close. He's got, you know, and he's got the exact image of that son in 53, and he's got all. But Micah says right here, this is, this is who and this is where. <laughs> this is one. Because that's him. He's coming to the ladies ready to have a baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the lady being the church, the bride of Christ, not male or female in gender, but the specific relationship with the Lamb of God. So let's read uh, now Luke chapter 1, and let's start in verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Pretend you've never heard this story before and just let the spirit land on it new because <laughs> it could be just so old in our heart and mind. Um, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, and the angel came, listen to every word, and just kind of think about it in a new, real way. Be open to the Holy Spirit. The angel came in unto her and said, what does angel mean? Messenger. Just messenger. 
just messenger. The messenger came in to, unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among vessels that can bring forth babies. <laughs> Blessed are you among earthen pots that can bring forth another life out of them. So that can include us guys and girls and everyone. Verse 28, or uh, yes, so the Lord is with you in a specific way. Blessed art thou among those who can have babies. Verse 29, and when Mary saw the messenger, she was troubled at his saying. This is a virgin here, not Mary. Cast in her mind, what manner of salutation is this? What manner? The messenger said, don't be afraid, Mary. Don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Listen. Listen and look. You are going to conceive in your womb. You're going to bring forth a son. You're going to call his name Jesus. So this is the manner of salutation the messenger had for her. Had nothing to do with her. Can you believe that God would send a messenger that has a message for you that has nothing to do with you and yet call you highly favored and not take that to your egocentric heart. <laughs> I'm just trying to be real here. That God would send a messenger and say, oh, snap, girl, you are highly favored of the Lord. Something incredible is going to happen to you. It ain't nothing about you. You're going to have a son. You're going to be able to bring forth a son, and his name is going to be Jesus, and he's going to be great, verse 32. I just love that sentence. He will be great, period. You never hear that one in there. He will be great, and you will not be the great one. Hallelujah. He will be great. Wouldn't you love it for a messenger to look at you and say, oh, my Lord, God has favored you because Jesus is going to be born out of you, and he's going to be great. And you're just, this is exactly what I wanted to hear, Lord. You know, this is the kind of prophecy I need. Not, you're going to raise up a ministry. Oh, the Lord's going to use you to heal the sick and reach the heathen. He's like, you're going to bring forth a son. His name's going to be Jesus, and he's going to be great, and you're going to decrease. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. He will be great. He'll be called what? Listen to each sentence this messenger has, because this is what Mike is trying to tell us right now. He's going to be the son of the highest. Holy God. The son that's going to be born in us, not only is he great, he's going to be the son of the highest. I'm going to revert to Micah for a second. Yet will I bring an heir out of you. Okay, bringing us back to Micah. Okay, back to Luke. All right. Fear not, O Mary. He shall be great. He shall be the son of the highest. The, listen to this. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. This son that's in you is going to govern where all these kings keep failing and all these other, right? Powerful if you are a Jew and know your history. It, it's powerful. That's why we search the scriptures so these sentences can affect us, you know, that deep. Oh, it continues. And he's going to reign over what? The house of, you name it, Jacob. Woo, and this is Jacob's sin. Samaria. Remember that? That's right. He's going to reign over those guys that keep bringing forth the wrong son because he's the right son. He's the heir. He's the firstborn, the son of the highest. He is great. Are you hearing what the Spirit's saying? It's like Christmas. No, not Christmas where Jesus was born in the stable. Christmas where Jesus gets born in you. Amen? Come on now. Comes out of you. That's Christmas. This is Christmas when the firstborn son comes out instead of all our junk. Glory to God. It's good news. It's good news. Now it gets even better. Well, listen, he's going to reign. His kingdom shall be of no end. And of his kingdom there shall be no end until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. He's going to be born out of you, Mary. All women who were created to bring forth another life call you blessed because you got the right life in you glory. 
Mm. Praise God. Then Mary said to the angel, this is verse 34, how shall this be? And she said, because I know not a man, but we've all got our end of that sentence. How shall this be? I just got my high places treaded on. They're still being treaded on. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this is me. We're not talking to the Virgin Mary right now. We're talking to, you know, messed up me. <laughs> I have no more strength. I have no more resources. Yeah. That's right. The cross took away all my ability to bring forth. So how can I do this? That's so precious. Thank you, Jesus in Jason. This is the answer. Okay, so all right. Now, isn't it cool that the Bible doesn't stop there? And then that's the end of chapter one. <laughs> the end. No, no, there's a verse 35. And the messenger answered her, yes, Lord, you are so good to us. Oh, my God. Listen to the answer. Make it your story's answer. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And listen to these words, because I don't know that everyone listens real close here. The power of the highest is going to overshadow you. And that holy thing which is going to be born out of you will be called the Son of God. All right, let's break that down. How are you going to do this crazy thing, this messenger, which, you know, we can hardly believe is real, is saying these things? The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you, and the power of the highest is going to overshadow you. So I'm going to do something so weird, but I am a bit of a weird teacher when I teach in Bible school. And I'm going to make you repeat after me these things, right? I want everyone to say this. How shall this be? Okay, and the messenger said, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon me. The power of the highest is going to overshadow me. And this holy thing that will be born of me, I will call him the Son of God. Amen. This needs to be real in our story. And then as if that isn't enough, as if an angel messenger appearing to this child isn't enough, she gets a second witness because God is merciful. <laughs> he is merciful. That's a whole lot to put on a 13-year-old girl, you know. Second witness, verse 36. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. She's six months pregnant. She who was called barren. Okay, again, God's ability to bring forth his son knows no bounds. Knows no bounds. Of course, Elizabeth is pregnant with John. But she's trying to, the spirit of God, the, the messenger of God is saying, but look at what God cannot do. Amen. He cannot just raise up Christ in us, <clears throat> but he can raise up the Holy Spirit to testify of Christ in us. He has not left us down here alone to travail in Babylon and bring forth. He has sent his word. He has sent his messenger. He has put his son in us by the Holy Spirit we have conceived of him. He has sent the power of the highest to overshadow us. He has given us his word to water that seed, and he has sent a second witness with those who are full of the Holy Spirit to say the Son of God is in you. You tell me the Lord isn't on our side. Yes, he's treading us. Yes, he's showing us what isn't Christ in us. But let's not only focus on that. He is going to bring forth his son if we want him. He, he is going to. And here we have it, the very place that Micah prophesied in the, his prophecy. We're right there now hearing all these amazing things that are helpers in bringing forth the son. The very purpose of Micah. All right. And then let's look at verse 37. Here it is. For with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Now, that is not about our bank accounts getting full, our cars getting fixed, our aunts being healed, and our warts falling off. That has to do with God bringing forth his son in idiots like you and me. I'm sorry for using that word. It's idiots like me because he loves them just so darn much. And that's why he created me and you to bring forth Jesus. And he died on a cross to wash away all my sins so I could be a vessel that he could, he could use to bring forth Christ. Amen? I'm just going to believe it. I'm just going to believe it. 
for with God nothing shall be impossible. And after that, Mary responds, and so should we, and so should we. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. I am yours. Yes, right now, look at me, Lord, and say, here's a little vessel that I can use. I'm nobody, but I'm your vessel. Behold me. And then she said, be it unto me. Oh, my sweet Jesus, who could begin to speak of this little phrase? Be it. Be it. She didn't say, do it unto me. She didn't say, tell me what to do so I can do this and bring forth this fruit in my own strength. She didn't say anything that was off. She said the perfect words, be it unto me. What do we say when God is dealing with us about this and that and we're an impossible thing? How can this be seeing that I am a mess, seeing that I have brought forth so much vile fruit, seeing that I am whatever? When God begins to say, because this and that, Holy Spirit, power of the highest, overshadow, Jesus, my heart, the word, the cross, all of these things, is our answer. But what about that thing I did yesterday? Or what about how mad you are about my vile fruit and you're treading on mine? What about, what about, say what? What about what? Did you just, were you in the room right now? Did you just, did you catch anything that just happened in here? Are you with us or are you out in the nether word, worlds of your own carnality? Because it's good in here. This is called conception. It's good ground. We're going to bring forth the sun in here. We got faith. Nothing's impossible. God, that barren old Elizabeth, she's, she's six months pregnant. Praise God. You, you should have nothing to do with having a baby. You're going to have one. Glory to God. This is the one all of Israel has been waiting for. He's going to be great. He's going to take the throne of David. Even govern Jacob's mess. Hallelujah. Do you hear this? Be it unto me, Lord. Be it. She didn't question him. She didn't point at herself. She didn't think about this and that. She just said, yes, let's do this. Do it, do it. You do it, Lord. Be it. Bring conception and let the sun be formed in me. Well, that's not special to Mary. She is an example to us. This is our story. The scriptures were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the earth have come. It's for us. Right now in this room, wherever you are listening to this, this is for you. This is the word of God, the eternal word of God for all that are in the earth. Because Micah said, let all of the earth hear, all the inhabitants of the earth, everyone who was created to be a vessel of the sun, everyone who was created was meant to be a vessel. It's for us, all of us. And then she said these next words, be it unto me according to thy word. Do this according to the eternal being, purpose, desire of your heart. And I'm telling you something, Mary knew the word of God like nothing. So when Mary said, and her prayer is going to show that, but when she said, do it to me according to the, thy word, Mary knew the law and prophets like nobody's business. Good God in heaven, when she prayed that prayer at the end of this chapter, this woman was a scripture searcher. She knew the word of God like crazy. So when Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word, it wasn't like this little nativity scene where she goes, be it unto me according to thy word. I only know the story of David and Goliath, but I trust God's word is true. This girl knew all about the promises of Abraham and all, my God, she knew all this. So she knew this is the fulfillment of what the word of God has been declaring should happen in our people. We should be a vessel of God's presence. This is a fulfillment of the purposes of God that his word is declared unto us. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Why do we search the scriptures? So we can say, be it unto me according to thy word. This is a fulfillment of that. This is that. This is that. This is that. We look at the scriptures and we say, Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is that. This is that. This isn't that. And we're pointing way up in heaven. Or we're pointing way over there at ministry. Or we're pointing at some future. This is that. Christ in me. I want him to form. Christ is in us. This isn't a future event. This isn't a religious institution. This is a vessel of the Son of God. This is that. So she said, be it unto me according to thy word. Let's 
bring it forth. Let's do it. Let's make it real. Let's give a manifestation to God as our, you know, hallelujah. Oh, there's so much there. So now, all right, so at this point, the messenger leaves. He's like, okay, we're good. <laughs> I feel like my work here is done. The messenger stage is over now. Now I leave you with the spirit and the word. Woo, let the fun begin. You know, he's just the man. You know, we get someone preaches to us or we listen to a tape or God uses something to tell us what's fixing to come. And Christ in you, the hope of glory, the cross, all that. We need a preacher. We got to have it. But the preacher ain't the spirit and the word. Holy Lord Jesus. Once we hear what that guy, is, that woman, that whatever messenger has said, now it's time to get down to the business. <laughs> Man, now it's the Holy Spirit in the Word, bringing forth the Son. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm thank you. I got it. We're good. Now I'm getting in there with God. <laughs> you know, I'm going in. Let's do this. Got to have that heart. Messenger leaves. Now she's ready. She's ready to be overshadowed. So she arises, verse 9. She goes to the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. So notice all of a sudden, she's just like, I got to get to Elizabeth with haste. She's like, I got to get around people who want to bring forth the son. I got to get around people who are all about bringing forth Jesus. I got to get around my own kind right now. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I cannot just like have God tell me all this and then just sit in my room by myself and think I'm going crazy. And I mean, this is in the Bible. This is Mary. This is us. You know, we go, why do I go to Bible? Why do I do this strange thing, like leave everyone to come to Bible school? Or, you know, just why do I sit here on Skype? And, you know, I could be watching whatever um, Marvel show is on right now. <laughs> There's great things on Netflix I could be watching. Why am I listening to this? Because something in you, his name is Jesus, says I need to, my little legs need to kick with John the Baptist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I need people to bear witness that I'm not crazy. The Son of God is in me. This is real. We need each other. We need each other. It's just the way it is. And oh my Lord, these two ladies, good God, what I wouldn't have given to been around there. I, I want to be them. We are them. Heck, we are. Hallelujah. Can you just imagine? One woman comes up, and I know we're fixing to read it here, but you know, she's like, oh my gosh, the baby's kicking in the womb. Blessed are you among women. Oh, the mother of my Lord is in the room. I mean, do we ever say that to each other? Do we look at one another and say, the mother of my Lord, Christ is in you. We go, good Lord Jesus, do you need help? You know, we look at the vessel and we go, mother of mercy, get me through this day because I got to be around this vessel again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's all vessel relating. You know, vessel, earthen vessel, earthen vessel, earthen vessel. Instead of the mother of my Lord just came to have a cup of tea and she is highly favored of God. And the spirit of God that I am filled with is just kicking in my womb, saying, Christ is in her, Christ is in her, Christ is in her. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we had that spirit to one another? You know, and, and, and yet this is what these two ladies did. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's read what they said. So I'm sorry I'm so silly tonight, but whatever. That's why you're, this will help you to not look at me. <laughs> Praise God. Look at Jesus. All right. Here, so Mary says in verse 46, uh, my soul, oh, this is her. This is really powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to go over the um, part with Elizabeth, but I guess before we do that, someone find where, all right, verse here, hold on a second. Go to verse 40 right now. We're just going to go back, and then we'll come to the Mary's prayer here. But verse 40, so she enters into the house of Zacharias, and she salutes Elizabeth. And it came to pass, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She speaks out with a loud voice and says, Blessed are you among women. And listen to this. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Why do the Catholics always get that line? I want it back. I mean it. I want to be able to look at someone and say, Blessed is the fruit of your womb. You know, how are you doing today? Well, I guess whatever. No, I would like my greeting to be, Blessed be the fruit of thy womb. You're a vessel of Christ, and that's how I want to know you. Blessed be the fruit of thy womb. Well, praise God, yeah. Blessed be the fruit of all our wombs. We got Christ in us. What are we doing asking the vessel how they're doing? They're earth and probably not very good. You know what I'm saying? Probably not very good. So let's focus on the sun. You know? I, I love that. <laughs> I just do. Anyway. 
All right. So uh, and listen to this next part. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? There it is. The mother of my Lord. Oh, you know, the Bible says, um, esteem one another better than yourself. Well, that's a start, isn't it, right there? <laughs> yeah. There, there it is, man. All right, and then verse 44, lo, as soon as the voice of, and this is Elizabeth to Mary, as soon as the voice of your salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leapt in my womb. Forward. So now we got John the Baptist. We got, you know, she was full of the Holy Spirit when she just said, blessed art, you know, blessed art thou on the fruit of thy womb. That's the Holy Spirit speaking through Elizabeth. But now you've got little baby John the Baptist kicking in her womb for joy. Come on. That's life bubbling all over the place, man. You don't tell me that's a message, just a doctrine. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Let's get this deeper life teaching into our heads. Let's write it in books. Let's get it out there. How about we get this baby kicking? How about we let the sun form? How about we just get so full of the Holy Spirit that we just affirm each other and pour life into this forming sun in one another? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I believe that. I, I want that, and I want to be a vessel of that more. Okay, so Mary, you know, again, she starts magnifying the Lord in verse 46. My soul doth magnify the Lord. On what basis? On the basis of God putting a son in her. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. He hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. But on what basis? That she brought forth a son. That she brought forth a son. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. Would you like him that is mighty to do great things to you in the regard of bringing forth Christ in you? Lord, I just say, you who are mighty, do great things to us. Bring forth your son in the name of Jesus, and holy is his name. And verse 50, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. I am going to challenge you to watch for the word mercy in the book of Micah. And I challenge you to challenge me back if that word doesn't have to do with God giving people like us the ability to bring forth Christ. If the word mercy isn't directly tied into bringing forth the firstborn son and not some random kindness. Just, I just challenge you. But his mercy is on them. That Well, the mercy to bring forth the son. That fear him from generation to generation. Okay, guys, that's us. We're, the gen we're another generation that wants the mercy of God to bring forth the Son in us. Hallelujah. God hears us. He hears us. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty. This is those that needed treading. He's put down the mighty from their seats. He's exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things. That's the Son. The rich he sent away empty, those that were full of other things. He has helped his servant Israel, and here's that word again, in remembrance of his mercy. And here's the cap, the top of it, the cherry on top. Verse 55, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Glory to God. You tell me this girl doesn't know the word of God. And not just know it, but see the sun in it. Be it unto me, and according to thy word, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. She's in tune, man. Whoo! Yeah, side by side. And Mary abode with her about three months. And those three months, God only knows what those three months with Mary, Elizabeth, and the Holy Spirit, and John in the womb. But you know, she stayed with Mary. Mary stayed with Elizabeth till she was came to full term because she was six months when she came. So three months would have put her at nine months. So that witness bearer, John the Baptist, the one who said, he must increase and I must decrease. From the womb, from the womb, in the power of the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist and the vessel that contained him was saying to Mary, he must increase and you must decrease. Let him grow, let him grow, this is God. Let the power of the highest be upon with the spirit overshadow you. This holy thing in you is the son. This holy thing in you is the son. Then she went back to husband Joseph. But she had three months of the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist and his mama. The word of God and the communion and fellowship of the saints. Hallelujah. She went back home and said, I might be stoned or I might bring forth the son of God. I might lose his husband. I don't know. But I'm ready. 
And that's us. That's why we come here to Bible school. That's why we come here on Skype. That's why we get in the, because we need to have that holy thing in us affirmed as the Son of God. And we need the Holy Spirit to kick and bear witness in us and through other people and in a little baby in, Mary, in Elizabeth's womb. And then when he gets older, he's going to do the same thing on the shores of the Jordan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is, this is about God's Son. There is no limit to the provision of the Lord that you and I will bring him forth. Because this is God's Son in us. Call his name Jesus, that holy thing. And it's not our goodness. It's not what we earned. It's not how well we can make this thing happen. In the power of the highest, by the conception of the Spirit, by the forming of the Father, you know what I'm saying? Will this holy thing in us, who is Jesus, the firstborn son, be formed and be brought forth? And so the Lord just said to me, let's encourage ourselves, even as Mary and Elizabeth did. Let's encourage ourselves, even as Mary did when she knew the word, even as Mary received the salutations of the messenger and said, I want this word to be my story and to be a life that comes out of me. This is, this is where Micah's going, and this is why Micah prophesied of this event, because he, by the Spirit of the Lord, said this has burdened the Father's heart that this ha actually happened in the earth. It's not happening in the type and shadow of my people, but they're just a type and shadow. But the day will come when it's not type and shadow anymore, and this son will actually be born, starting with Mary and continuing with the church after the cross. And this will be our story, the prophecy of the seed of Christ in you and me. This is a prophecy of the seed of Christ in you and me, and the travail, the labor, the delivery that's required to bring it forth, the travail, that word, the delivery, that word, required to bring it forth, those words are all over my God. Key words, key words. They're all over my God, because that's what he's there for. And so, Yes, let's let the Lord tread our, our high places. Yes, let's mourn with Micah over that which wasn't the son and could have been. But let's also be with Mary and say, nothing is impossible with God. Yet you will bring forth the heir. Yes, Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And there was one point in there that I didn't see in my notes, but I know it's in the scriptures, and it is this, and you can look it up on your own to verify and validate that this is the word. It says, that which she hath believed, there will be a performance of this. There will be a performance of what she has believed. And I, verse 45. Okay, verse 45. When you read that, Deb. Please. And blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Thank you. Verse 45. And I'm going to say it again so everyone can hear it. Blessed is she that believed, for there will be a performance of those things that were told her from the Lord. Those things for that she's going to bring forth a son and he's going to govern. He's going to rule. Listen. Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Our place isn't to be the righteousness. Our place isn't to earn it. Right now, we just need to believe that this is in God's heart, and it is his desire to bring forth his son in us, and there will be a performance of those things. So let's just pray that right now. Lord, we just say yes. We say we believe in those things that are told us concerning the word of God, about Christ in us being the hope of glory, about Christ being formed in us and manifesting through us in his lamb and nature of selfless giving, in his spirit of sacrifice. Lord, we believe that this is the eternal heart of God, that you have set this forth when you crucified your own son, that this might be released into us through oneness, and that Jesus Christ, the firstborn son, the lamb of God, might live in us and die through us and come out of us and sacrifice to you, Father, and give life to others, and that it is not I but Christ. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit would overshadow us. We say overshadow us, Holy Spirit. We say, be it unto us according to thy word. We say we believe. We want to see the performance of it when Christ comes forth in new ways. And Father, as we continue to be sent off into exile in some areas, and you spare not your rod, but feed us with it. These are also verses in Micah. Lord, even there, if we search our scriptures, we hear the prophets crying out, bring him forth in captivity. The purpose is to bring him forth there, not to cry over the fruit that sent you there. And so, Lord, we can sit right in our field of dealing and chastisement, captivity, and we can say right here and right now, be it unto me according to thy word, I believe 
I will bring forth your son in this because that is your heart and I'm lining up by my faith and I'm willing to be with you in the process in the power of the Holy Spirit and by the life of your son. And so we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.